question is from Delicious and Nutritious. <laughs> Does foam rolling actually work? What's the science behind it? Is it better to have a hard or a soft foam roller? I, li I like this question because go hard. Um, as trainers for many years, I think uh, I I know I explained this incorrectly. We explained it incorrectly when we started the pump, mind pump. Yeah, yeah, early on. Remember, we talked about foam rolling as uh, myofascial release. Well, it was explained. It. Yeah, it was explained. Uh, you know, wrong to us to begin with. So yeah, yeah. Foam foam rolling uh, is not m releasing the fascia as as a lot of us thought. It wasn't. It's not you know breaking down you know knots and tissue and adhesions. Like a lot of us thought, it's probably not what's happening, um, but it does have some value. It really does. It's not going to fix a problem, but foam rolling allows you to move in ways that allow you to fix the problem. This is where the value is. So let's say you're, you're, you have issues getting into a good, proper squat because your knees hurt and your hips feel sore. So you foam roll for 15 minutes beforehand. Now you can get into a proper squat. So does that mean the foam roller fixed you? No. It, it, it allowed you to get into that proper squat to train in a way now. Right. It gives you a temporary relief. Yes. Yeah. It's very temporary. And, and if you don't fix the root cause of the of your pain or your mobility issues, you'll have to foam roll every single time you work out. And over time, you'll, can, you'll start to get worse if you don't correct those problems. Now, correct me if this is kind of how I explain it in layman's. Like what happens to us when we, when we get these, you know, quote unquote knots or tightness feeling is... This is your your CNS overactive. It's a protective mechanism. And if you think that every time you move a muscle or you activate a muscle, wow. all these these neurons from your brain are fired there, and let's just say for argument's sake, it's a hundred of those get fired there. When it's super overactive, instead of firing a hundred there, it's firing five hundred there, and so it's just it's getting over overworked and it gets tense and tight because of that. And it's more CNS related than it is something going on with our fascia or our muscle. It's just overly mm. stressed. And then when we roll like that, you get. Just just like when you get a nice, good deep tissue massage, it relaxes that and releases yeah, it. It sort of dampens the signal. I think that, I mean, the the pain signal is beneficial to identify potential problems. And I think that, like, we forget the fact that pain is, it, you know, that's feedback. That's that's something to pay attention to. And, you know, for, for you to, like, now foam roll and apply pressure in that area to be able to kind of, um, you know, maybe damper down that signal. So now it can allow for you to keep on like thinking that, you know, you're supported in that area and everything can, uh, you know, function properly. That helps to kind of then promote these better patterns to occur as a result of that. But I think it is, it's just, it's just a way to kind of uh, release a lot of the 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 immediate tension and the the alarm system, if you will, of like, hey, something's wrong here, and we need to like really like yeah. tighten up I mean, and protect. I still there's still a ton of value to it. Oh, I, I still use foam rollers here and there. Yeah. Um, I, I I like them exactly for what we're how we're explaining them. I mean, what, what we know is when you apply pressure to a part of your body, there are uh, localized, you know, natural anesthesia anesthetics that get released. There's natural you know, chemicals that are released in that area that kind of start to alleviate pain. So that's number one. But number two, here's the big thing that's happening. So if you've ever had a muscle cramp, you ever woke up in the middle of the night where your calf is real tight, oh, yeah. you instinctually push on it. You instinctively try to smash on it with your hand or stretch it out. And the reason why you're doing that instinctually is because when you're pressing on a muscle, your brain receives a signal that'll say, relax, relax that area, relax that muscle. Um, and, and so that's what ends up happening. It helps calm it down. When you have tight muscles, those muscles are tight because they're probably tight because they feel like they need to protect you because of poor movement patterns. Well, and using that example, let's say somebody you cramped up all the time because you have some sort of a nutritional deficiency. Sure. You, you, you putting that pressure on for release, you're not fixing it because you're not addressing the root cause. Right. So you'd have to you're, dive you're into that. it. So the yeah. same thing goes with mobility, right? If you are, goes with this, you know, let's say you have, you know, IT real common, right? So it causes either knee pain or hip pain normally for people. They roll it, they feel relief from it. The foam roll is not fixing it. It's giving you temporary relief. So then you can go into doing the either strength training exercises that are necessary or the mobility work that is necessary yeah. to help work towards it. If you don't do that and you just foam roll to relieve it and then you go about your movements kind of the same way you always have, you're just going to keep having to do that yeah. all the time. Which, it was it yeah. wasn't until we got into mobility training did I was I able to eliminate using the foam roll. Like I went from the guy who used to foam roll 
for 15, sometimes 20 minutes before a good strength training session because I, I felt it was necessary for, to get me relieved enough just so I could go after, get after a good lift to someone who doesn't have to do it at all anymore. But that's be also because I've implemented mobility into mobility work days into my training now, mm -hmm. and now I don't have to do any Well, more. yeah, it, it tripped me out even just going through FRC and things where we're just focused more on the isometric part of that, like not even necessarily movement, but more just like the squeeze and the tension that that actually has that same effect of like localized pressure. But now, you know, me just squeezing and connecting more to the muscle actually alleviated a lot of the pain almost instantaneously. Right. Yeah, it's, no, it's not that different from getting deep tissue massage. Although a, a good massage therapist, obviously, is going to be you know targeted and individualized and, and far more effective, but it's not that different. The same kind of relief that you'll get from deep tissue massage is very similar to what you'll get from a foam roller. But even with like same thing, like let's say you have pain and so you go see a massage therapist and when you're done, oh my God, it feels so much better. You're probably going to have to keep going if you don't solve the reason why you're getting tight like that yeah. in the first place. And so that's what so foam rolling is a very it's, valuable tool, but it is not a solution. Yeah. It's part of a solution. I look at it as almost like active versus like passive therapy. So this is like probably one of your passive, even though you're the one instituting it, it's more passive than actively controlling it. I would agree.